and then we begin. Uh, yeah, quick, quick history of what we're doing. So the game we're playing is, uh, the system is called Fate Accelerated. Um, and we're playing a sci-fi opera game, sci-fi opera, sci-fi game. Um, ma mainly considering pirates, because I wanted to create a pirates game in space. So, um, yeah, so a bit of history. Let me quickly switch this up to roll 20. So I made I made a map just to see where everything is like around ish. Um, so currently this universe you guys see is the um, I'll say it correctly. This one was the Pisces universe. So this universe started roughly six hundred years ago when humans from Earth came here and started creating human races. Well, human ish races. Um, so there was a small group of humans and the main reason to do this was prepare other planets for human arrival. Uh, in the Pisces system where we currently are, there are three races have been discovered, uh, which are the, well, there are more races, but there are three planets with races. So we over here, we have the turtle tortoise um, symbol. That's for the planet of the Mare and Shoray. Then we have the broken wheel of four elements, which is for three races called the. Get my notes here. Um, right. Oh yeah, it's for the Mamonubi, which one race is the Mamon, one race is the Monu, and one race is the Nubi. Then this over here, that's your guy's secret spot to your guy's pirate lair. You're part of a pirate group called the. Gulum Kambi of Passage. So your rooster is basically your symbol. And then we have the planet of the Leshy down here. Um, and on, on top, uh, we have a portal to another universe which was similarly created 600 years ago with the same ship, which is the Ares system. And there the Ares Alliance live. And those are mostly um, more human clones as well. So all of these are clones of humans. There's no real humans anymore, but there is a, a degradation of human that you still are. So in the Ari system, we have like um, uh, some super humans that are, they are like 95 to 97% still human, but they have longer lifespans. They're bigger, they're stronger, faster. And those are the Ovis. The, those are the smallest group of any race, uh, but to help them with their normal day to day, they they still make their own clones, uh, which are called the weather. And because the weather are looks like humans, but they have like small differences, um, there are a lot of them because they're still being cloned, and all the clothes that are not being used just been sent out into space, and they make babies. So there's lots and lots of them. Also in your guys' system right now, there's lots lots of uh, ovis. Uh, sorry, of weather. Um, so the mare and the charade, the charade is um, is humans with like you know gills and other stuff that they can live under um, go underwater for a few hours for a long amount of time, but not forever. So they mostly live on land, and then the mare, who are more human sea creature hybrids, and they mostly live under sea and less on land. The Mamanubi are creatures that have to consume some kind of sand or stone to be able to live. This protects their makes a form of sand on their skin, so they look very sandy or stony um, to protect against like heat and like small kinds of radiation. And the Leshy are like small, kid-sized, um, pr uh, more like uh, mammal people. So they have like big ears. They can have like dog-like appearance or more like bunny there's like different they have like big ears like fur on them and very they live very primal and they are lost discovered uh there are aliens but not very much you're not accompanying to that um so that's so that's our the places and races uh so for your guys characters i'm just going to open your guys character sheet here uh let's start with Amodi osmodius because i have you on top so Asmodeus, you were a, um, if I remember correctly, you were a, a, a weather. Yeah. And you, your, your 
clone, clone born. So you you were a clone. You're st you're still a clone, but you were made it in a clone machine, and had like a smaller lifespan where you're young. So you age very quickly until you were like 16. Um, and you were created for diplo diplomacy uh, work, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So a thing in the game's aspects you can use to describe your character but we will use those in gameplay later as well so now you're working for something called the eternal exchange so you're an ex eternal exchange representative um you're very narcissistic have nar narcissistic tendencies and of course one of your aspects is that you're a clone <laughs> so there are others like you walking around um and you can use that as a benefit as well because people would think hey that's a clone um yeah, how do you look? You have you're the only one who made your own drawing, which I like. is great, of course. Um, so the blue hair, uh, I think something you mentioned that's what sets you apart from humans. No, um, mostly the blue hair, which is a bit um, synthetic. And um, the only thing I'm, yeah, wearing, of course, um, yeah, some some yeah, pretty fancy clothes because yeah. Uh, exchange <laughs> they won't let you wear rags um and uh, i have a um a signature necklace around my neck which is green of color yes that's so a it's a gemstone a special gemstone right is it no. is it a neatly cut gemstone or is it like a rough fresh out of the no universe? very very neatly cut and then you have some stunts, so stunts are things you can do under certain circumstances and that makes your character look more special. So your character is well connected, so once per session you can say uh, you can find an ally in every place or at least a place or at least nearby. So you can also say like, I might know a guy. Doesn't mean he's nice or in good terms with you, but you know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because you are um, of the eternal change, you have like a fear toxin you can release to make people flee. Um, you have described it as a scary demon. Uh, maybe for some it will be something like slightly different, but it's yeah. also something to make them scared of you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we know it's like gas based. Yeah, fear toxin. And uh, yeah, so as Modis, like you're uh, like you're a small pirate crew, and your job is mostly. I think you're probably one. You're the guy who haggles. You're the trades guy, so you're probably also like in charge of the equipment on the ship. Uh, so basically, you check the supplies and stuff, like you seeing if there's still enough. Um, if you need to go buy out and buy stuff, and you probably sell all the stuff, like what's not worth using. All right. Okay. Um, Clear. Go to Astra, Astra, Astra Invictica. Well, we see Mary Devich on the screen, so that's your real name. You're under a pseudonym named Invictica. Uh, you are a charade, uh, mm -hmm. so you're like the picture you have chosen. You can see you have like, um, what, what are they called? Not fins, um, webbing between your fingers. Yes. Um, so you're a runaway from, from your parent, from your family. Uh, basically from your home planet, if you're not there. And you're a bit of a con artist. Is it still, are you still a bit of a con artist? Because it was like a early draft. I don't know if it's still... mm, I'm, I'm mainly a pirate now, a, a pilot. Okay. More of a pilot, less of the con artist, but I still do it on the side. Yeah, so we can leave it in there. Um, so you, the trouble is you're, you're always looking over, your, usually twice, so you know you have to log out and you're is it like a bit paranoid? Is that what you're saying, or you, you, yes. you're very careful? Uh, both. <laughs> both. Okay. Yeah. So that that might get you into troubles uh, sometimes. Um, and one of your aspects is you secretly miss home uh, more than you let on, which is great. So <laughs> you 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 miss like your like was it like the lifestyle or the planet or the fam? What 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 does she miss most about home? Is it the planet? Uh, it's mostly um, the planets and just being around people who ba are basically well being around her race. She, she yeah, she just really misses that feeling of being included. Yeah, I guess yeah. You 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 have like a home on on the ship, where we'll get to in a moment. 
but it's you know there's like five people and you're you kind of like have to get along with them <laughs> so like you share a lot with them and you're, you're everybody you know everybody's hiding stuff from each other so okay yeah so you created the stunt because i'm good at hi hiding i can quickly overcome obstacle and put in tight spots do you mean you 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 can hide from an end like you can successfully hide once once a session is that what you're trying to get with the stunt uh yes okay that works uh and because i'm best at controlling a vehicle i can use get in the you can get in an advantage position once per game session so yeah yes. that's what the one we talked about it's like yo know, you can run the ship but there's like other vehicles around the world and you can use it to get into an advantage position uh we'll see that i really looking forward to that stunt <laughs> see what happens there. My boy. Uh, then we have John Brons. Um, John Brons is one of the Mamanu. You're a Monu, so that's the more human sized uh, of the race, the most human looking. Um, yep. You're a cy pirate cyborg. Um, you're currently um, the cyborg cook of the MacGuffin. Uh, the MacGuffin is the ship your guys are on, are on. And it's basically like. Pirates of the Caribbean Black Pearl. It's like a legendary ship. Nobody has their stories about it, and they don't know if they're real. They're like myths, but for you guys, you know it's real. But it's such a big ship; it never comes really close to a planet. It's basically like an air deck ship. Other planes, let you have like ships inside your big ship. Um, so you mostly go to the small ships to get to planets. Um, so you care more about money than anything we got the greedy person here uh we're <laughs> going to start a mut mutiny probably yeah because your wish is like to get a ship for yourself again, again. after you lost yes. your first one can <laughs> well we me might need to <laughs> rewrite the way you point who put it is can get soft for the people he likes that sounds like a penis joke but <laughs> <laughs> oh, no <laughs> But I, 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 I know what you mean there. Um, stunts. Uh, I don't see any stunts filled in. Did you have some? Um, yeah, we, we talked a bit um, we talked about one the... one like, was like X-ray uh, vision, right? Yes. So once a term, you, or once a session, you can use your X-ray vision-ish to see something useful. Um, did you have a second one? I'm trying the, to... Um, the cannon. Ah yes, so once uh, you can use your cannon once, uh, was it like once a turn or did you get a plus two? I don't remember. I think like once a session, because like... Yeah, I was like reloading. And, like, yes. Yeah, I think, yeah, you can use your cannon like more often, but you can do like a big shot like once once a session, right? So you can, yeah. you can say you can use it more like for like small stuff, but you say once a session that's like, I really want to boss something down. So for all of us, this is the first time playing this this specific system. For some of us, it's like the first time playing a campaign or roleplay of any. Um, so yeah, if something feels too strong or too weak, we can configure later on. Um, you should have normally people have like three stunts when beginning. Uh, we start with two to to see like okay maybe you find something else interesting you can think of later on. And I didn't want to make you guys too confusing about all the stuff you can do, so we'll just start with an easy tool and we'll get three later. Um, okay, so that's a, uh, a bit of your characters. So currently you have been, are all on the ship, uh, as mentioned, uh, on the ship, the MacGuffin. Um, you're all working under a pirate captain, and this pirate captain's name is uh, Montgomery Amsterdam, so Captain Amsterdam, or Monty, he doesn't prefer Montgomery. Um, uh, his race is, for you guys, it's unclear. You know he's not a leshy, uh, but you know he's human looking, but because of one of his mutations, um, he has a certain mutation called uh, Void Clubs, giving him a black like black puddles of eyes like his eyes are like dark holes like he can still see out of them but you can from every corner from every angle of his face you can never see his eyes it's just shadow there uh, it also gives him like a the skin is very tight around his 
uh, face. It's, it's a bit skull-ish looking, his face. Uh, so that's why you don't really, can't really define which, which race he is, either if he's um, uh, wetter or if he's um, Leshy. Uh, sorry, Leshy not, but uh, Bold Amonu. So it's, it's not pretty clear to you guys. Um, he's got a big ship. And let me, I'm gonna pull up the ship for people watching. So I have a layer here. So the ship itself is very big. It can handle like two, three medium shape, uh, ships or like six, seven small ships. And then it can probably have like 50 people living and working on there. Currently there are five, which is you three, him, and you guys have a mechanic called uh, Jax, um, Jax Keys, so Jax uh, is his first name. Uh, he's a Leshy, and he's your guy's uh, mechanic. Um, so the reason it's not crowded on the ship, because the, 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 the GOP, the Gulagami of Passage, you have more, pir there are more pirate ships. This is of course the most biggest one, uh, but your captain has been on a, a very special mission for the last few years. His former captain, um, named Captain Dals, has, he worked for on this ship. They they had hit it, they had still a lot of treasure and they hid in it on a special place. And he's been searching the correct place for this, um, for this treasure. Um, during this, he has sold a lot of stuff that was on the ship. Lots of the good equipment, lots of, so the ship is almost bare bones. You, it hasn't been making money for years. This has been like a search of six years. So this is why he he basically lost crew, and you're the only guys who still like believe that he's close um, to to get it to his goal. And he's actually been he he says he now knows the location, and he has the key to open uh, open the open the space where he needs to go. Uh, and that's where we begin the game is your guys are on one you just left um you guys left the mcguffin on a smaller ship piloted by astra and you're going to space 1.0 because on 1.0 there's a planet uh which is called um stygian i'm just gonna put it in chat for you guys there stygian uh, Stygian is known, uh, especially by the modern movie, as a as a hell planet. This is because almost the whole planet is covered in water, and they see water as death. So that's why this one is called a hell planet. Uh, you guys also know that um, the the Shore and the and the, and those races have been searching to, because it's a water planet. They checked if it's livable. For some reason, they have defined this planet as not livable for their race. Um, so you're you're piloting the ship and you're you're putting on uh, spacesuits because you know you're gonna go outside. Um, you're basically landing on a an asteroid because this planet has an asteroid ring, but this asteroid is very close to the ozone layer of the planet. Um, and it seems, if you can see, it's. It's so sm close to the ozone layer, it's like it's it's just keep there in spot for a reason. It's not possible for a normal asteroid to be in this so close all the time. And you guys land there, and captain, uh, the captain speaks to you. Okay, okay, fellas. Well, here we are. So, everyone put on your suits. And he starts putting on his space suit as well. Um, they're very clunky suits, like he sold like the good suits, uh, but it's for you guys so that you're able to walk on the surface without floating away and can breathe and survive any like radiation or gases that are on this asteroid. It's like, okay, well, if, if I'm right, like I have the key, this should be the location. I hope if we find a treasure, that you know, you'll, we'll, we'll t talk about it later, but I hope We'll think of something to do together. I don't, I don't want us, you know, be training you guys. We've been working together. I don't want us all to split up and just enjoy the money. Well, if you guys buy, we'll, we'll look into it. But okay, so every, everybody ready? Has, has everyone got a suit on? And he's I can. 
He's like checking your suits. That's right. Okay. Blue hair, you're ready. Oh yeah, Captain. Iron Pag. I right, Captain. Okay. Water girl. Definitely. Sure. Like he opens like the small hangar. So this ship, it can hold um, the can hold like eight people, and there's like a big like sp um, space to um, put stuff in, like like a ch big truck on the back. Um, and you guys walk on the asteroid, and at this point, like talking would be harder because you know you you, you basically got communication uh, on this planet going. Um, you guys start walking, following the captain. Um, yeah, it's uh, if you look down, like you can see the planet like completely blue, because it's completely with water, and uh, like above you, you can see the asteroid ring uh, of this planet flying by. And you, you start walking and walking, and he goes, "Okay, guys, I think it's over there." Um, and he starts walking towards the spot he's facing. So he basically. In the last year, he's been he's been finding persons for this location, and assembling parts for a key. And he has connected them in one part, and it's like a, it's basically like a star made of stone. And he, okay, guys, there should be a slit somewhere to to put this thing in. Let's all search. And he starts searching. Um, yeah, let's just make a roll for fun so that we see how that works. So let me open the questions. So. Yeah, if you all guys, like, somebody needs to get it too, and all of you, okay, you're you're not going to do a flashy approach right now. You're also not going to do a forceful <laughs> approach. Um, so either make a careful, clever, or sneaky approach to see who can get it too. All right, so we just uh, press the roll button? Yeah, we just press the roll button on the John already has a two there. So how does games work? You're rolling. If you had a real game, you would be rolling dice that say plus, minus, and like zero. So John in case rolled like a plus, a, zero, uh, a plus, a minus, and two neutrals. So you basically with the dice you rolled a zero, but with your dice you got with your plus two bonus you got a plus two. Um, so with your cleverness you found it. Um, if we look at Asmodeus. Well, basically, he had two pluses, so he got a plus one when his plus two is a three. And if I look at the one of Astra, so Astra had one minus on the roll, didn't get an extra plus there. <laughs> she, she has a minus one. In this case, there's there's nothing like going on. There's no. I just want to make you guys roll to see how it works. There's no penalty for not getting it. Uh, in this case. But uh, Osmodius is one you, you, you find the slot in like one of the rocks. And it's very well hidden. Um, it just looks like a natural rock. So the captain hands you the star to put it in. Do you do it? Yeah, I'll try. Yeah, so it easily <laughs> slits in. And it's like, it's like, like a door opens. It's like, just like a lock unlocks and you can see the form of a door that you're now able to open. Uh, it, it takes like two or three of you to be able to open the whole door completely and you're in a big hallway. This hallway is filled with money and stuff. Um, so how money works in this game, uh, most your guys universe is most prone to use credits which are a digital currency on like a stick you have or another device. Um, the other, the Iris, uh, Iris Alliance, still uses coins. Uh, basically, ranging a coin for one, a coin for ten, a coin for hundred credits. Um, so it's this room is filled of like the physical coins uh, and stuff, and many like human, uh, human items. Since human have not been here, like only a few humans been to this universe six hundred years ago. Lots of human stuff is not. So these are actual human items uh, which are worth a lot of money as well there's this whole this there's this big hallway there's a, a pot between the treasure and it's not like a straight pot it's like zigzagging through the whole hallway you can see some side rooms 
further on and at the back uh, there's like this big stone arch but there's like nothing behind it it's just a room it's just an arch telling in the middle of the end of the room um, all the power is still down it's completely dark in here but you do know it's 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 not a stone room it's a technical room so you know there might be you see lights that are off you see there's no gravity currently here so all the money is like slightly flowing but most of it has been like slightly tied down <laughs> but there might be a way to turn on the electricity so the captain starts walking in um okay everyone uh, i'm gonna have a look at there uh so if somebody i'm gonna look at the arch so somebody want to split up in the rooms and look there maybe some people or someone already wants to put some treasure in the ship but what I'm actually looking for is something the captain had, what I think is very special. It's we called it the Kerberos key. Uh, it's it's like a small. You'll recognize it when you see it. Okay, that's I really want that thing. It was like very impressive. So if, if we can find it, you know, grab it. Um, yeah. So um. So if somebody takes the left, if somebody takes the right, like, does anyone of you already want to grab some treasure and go back to the ship? Uh, I will uh, explore. And uh, I, I, I'd like to take the right. Yeah, you take the right? Yeah. Okay, so you, you head off towards the right to one of the rooms on the right. Uh, the, one of the first doors you see here after you come in it's like a small room and this is the engineering bay this here you might be able to put back probably like the gravity and the lights uh of the it's currently turned off uh with like a tech check you might be able to turn stuff on again all right um i'd like to do that uh cleverly sure go ahead all right So yeah, it's it's not the devices are not broken, so you have a plus two, uh, so you got a two. Uh, yeah, you're able to put the lights on and the gravity. You don't get the gravity perfect. It's it's slightly lighter than should be, uh, but you're able to easier walk and the coins do fall to the ground. But it's not like perfect human gravity basically. Um, while he's doing that, what's what's Astra doing? Um, I would like to take the left. You go to the left. Um, yeah, you, you go to the left. Uh, and one of the first rooms on the left um, seems to be. Um, it seems to be like a a server room. So basically, storage. So there seems to be computers connected to hold this device. The first door on the left is like the server room, which now, as soon as you get in, turns on together with all of the lights and the gravity. You see, all the servers are starting up. Um, so have, they have been down for a while. Uh, how big is the room? Uh, the room, like if we go to European terms, it's like five by five meters so that's 15 by 15 feet no no, no it's time yeah it's around 15 by 15 feet. Right. okay okay um i want to take a look around see if there's anything um of note um sure uh let's make a roll to see if you can find anything all right i'll do that Astra. i'll do that cleverly yeah that's probably what you want to do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is horrible. So, you rolled very bad here. So, you could <laughs> say you have three fate points. Fate points can be used to either re roll a roll, or you can look at your aspects and see if you can use one of your aspects to, um, to get like a plus two extra. Um, so I could say like I'm gonna use one of my fate points. I'm gonna say I'm always able to look look over my shoulder usually twice. Is a reason why you might be looking twice down everything to be able to find something. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah, I'll use that one. The the aspect. Yeah. So you use your aspect. Like we see you like 
truly checking everything and then sometimes like look back at the door start w going through stuff again look back at the door um check check the floor check the ceiling um you find in one of the servers a small there's a device connected basically for us would be a, a usb stick usb drive so something is still connected that you can take out uh i'll, I'll take it out so you pocket it you don't have like a device to put it in right now so mm -hmm. you store it you store it for now um, all right what's what's john doing while well, they're searching the first rooms there are some more rooms available if you want uh, but you can also um, look at the treasure or take treasure back to your ship i'd like to look out uh the room i'm in right now yeah you want to see the, and the, hall, the big hallway yeah i um i want to see where the captain is right now so yeah the captain has walked to the end and there's this arch and when you get closer it looked like stone from a vent but it's also it's actually very mechanical um, and he's checking out the archway and he he's like it starts because the power is now on there's some lights going off but it doesn't seem to have any purpose and he's basically looking at the arch and nothing really happens so at some point he's just starting to check the treasure like immediately around um the archway all right and he's like john john find anything good uh i i shunt it um puff chest very proudly uh and i say um i turned on the lights so um nothing yet else okay okay how about the smoke and you go ahead sorry i want to circle back towards the room but on my way um grab a hand of treasure and stuff in my pocket yeah just but yeah no problem okay uh osmodius right. what do you do uh are there any more rooms left yeah there's that some, are there's unchecked some, there's some some still some rooms like after the first rooms they've checked both on the right and on the left okay i want to check the second room on the right okay so you go to the second room on the right um it's it's during size they're all very like similar like five by five feet uh this one is actually rounded completely round room there are screens like put up uh all over the room is my discord restarted do you guys still hear me Give it a sec. Discord, I think, broke down. 